103.9 FM, WOZO Radio, Knoxville. Ladies and gentlemen, may I have your attention, please? Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Hello and welcome to the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. We're recording this on Sunday morning, October 24th, 2021. I'm Larry Rhodes, or Doubter 5, and as usual, we have our co-host, Wombat, on the line with us. Hello, Wombat. It's 2021. Can I still say this? Who let the dogs out? Yeah, you can I like still to stay on top. I can still say that. Okay, great, great, great. Yeah, I appreciate certainly. it. Okay. Yeah. Our guests today are George Brown, the second and a half from Brooklyn. Hello. Uh, we have Dread Pirate Higgs. Hi, Gary from Canada. Oh, hi there. And the John, the John Richards, from, all the way from England. Hello. Hello. Digital Free Thought Radio Hour is a talk radio show about atheism, free thought, rational thought, humanism, and the sciences. And conversely, we'll also talk about religion, religious faiths, gods, holy books, and superstition. And if you think you're the only non-believer in town, you know, you're just not. In Knoxville, we have a group of over a hundred, I mean, a thousand of us. Yeah. And we'll tell you more about that after the mid-show break. Wombat, where are we going in the talk today? We're going to be talking about the physics of unreality and all that pertains to it. But before we get into that subject, which should be really fun today, we're going to throw it up to our own Dread Pirate Higgs with our weekly invocation. Our noodly Lord, who art in a colander, al dante be thy noodles. Thy blood be rum, thy sauce be yum, with meat as it is with vegetables. Give us this day our garlic bread, and forgive us our cussing, as we forgive those who cuss against us. And lead us not into ketoism, but deliver us some carbs. For thine are the noodles and the sauces and the grog whenever and ever. Ramen. You know, I really love how it always takes a dig at ketoism. It's <laughs> 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 yeah, <that's> hard for me. <laughs> okay. Hey, Dred, why don't we introduce the topic of the show? All right. Well, yeah, I was uh, interested in talking about the physics of unreality and it's how uh, media, you know, particular movies and television shows presents a distorted view of how the world works and how Mm -hmm. there may be a tendency of some to actually believe it works that way. And, um, you know, in the absence of critical thinking, uh, you know, it could lead to issues where, uh, the way we imagine the world working is in direct conflict with the way it actually works and leads to some pretty bad outcomes. And you know, what's weird. You actually worked on movie sets, yeah. haven't you? So you actually <laughs> have like the, the full scope of seeing the strings, the direct. Yeah, oh yeah. Okay. Absolutely. Swap out the stunt guys, people. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. 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 <laughs> okay. Stand still. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> put in the grenade. Yeah, yeah. Okay, step out. Put the dummy. Blow him up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. The holy grenade. The holy. Yeah, the holy, grenade. the holy, holy grenade. And this is actually going to be a topic uh, previously, but uh, I unfortunately got, uh, missed the memo and got oh. too excited about something else. <laughs> but what do you find so irksome? Like, what's an example that you want to talk about that's so irksome? About well, you know, I, I I think with the prevalence of uh, you know these superhero uh, TV mm. shows and and movies that we really get a distorted uh, view of certainly what the body can take, uh, what the human body is capable of withstanding. Um, You know, you you think about the flash, for instance, uh, that instantaneous motion, you know, from zero to 110, um, you know, it's the same as hitting a brick wall, traveling at 110. You know, the, you know, the fact that, You know, your internal organs, of course, would just be, you know, a big pile of mush inside your body um, is, you know, something that you sort of have to uh, recognize is the case. Or even, uh, you know, where you see Superman, you know, somebody's falling off a building and he, you know, flies underneath them and scoops them, you know, it's like, right. Well, you know, I mean, if somebody fell into uh, somebody's arms traveling at uh, terminal velocity, uh, with the man of steel, his arms would in fact cut them into three nice pieces, mm. bloody pieces at that. So, 
Larry, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, I always was interested in those pictures. I thought they were funny where, like, Superman was lifting up like an aircraft carrier. And I mean, you think about the size of his hands, <laughs> right. you know, and, and even if he was the most powerful thing in the world, if he went and there was an aircraft carrier above him, he would have just flown right on through it because the yeah. weight of the aircraft carrier would have just pressed down it. Yeah. And just, you know, it's he like been supporting a, 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 or with an elephant on a toothpick. Like yeah. 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 Uh -huh. <laughs> there is an interesting scene in the <clears throat> superhero show called The Boys, which is on Amazon, where they fly into a plane that has both of its engines like blown off or something. And the superhero type character is like, okay, I guess we're, we can't do anything. We're gonna have to fly away. And then there's another superhero who's like, can't you lift this plane up? And he's like, don't you know how physics work? I have to press some off something to be able to push up. If I'm yeah. flying in the air, I can't push off of anything. So we can't save this plane. We're done. We're after, we're after well, the that's, the thing the about, yeah. that's also the thing about Superman. What's he pushing against? Yes. I can understand it. Like if he had wings and, you know, he's right. pushing against the air, but how can and, and, you do it without and, any kind of jet and what's, engine? And what's the, what's the mode of propulsion? Like, right. You know. Right. Oh. Uh, John Richards, listen, I know you might be feeling left out with a superhero discussion, but you gave <laughs> us Harry Potter. Like, <laughs> and I think eventually we're going to be going into the realm of, you know, it's all just magic at the end of the day. Like the superhero, <laughs> the, the force that controls the Flash, all these like, you know, tantalizing aspects are magic. And I feel like who does magic better than like Tolkien, who does magic better than, you know, the, the Harry Potter universe and stuff like that. But do you I find anything? Wand. I have my wand right here. <laughs> do you, do you uh, find anything particularly irksome about like the concepts of magic and like, why do you still have these problems if you can levitate anything or anything like that? Yeah. Well, it, it may surprise you to hear that Marvel comics made it across the Atlantic. No way. No way. <laughs> How do you but, get a comic book to fly that far? That's crazy. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> but uh, the, the problem is, if it was presented realistically, hmm. a movie would be intensely boring, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. sure. I mean, uh, uh, unless something happened like uh, somebody put a live bullet in the prop gun. Ooh. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that was the Eric Baldwin thing that just happened recently. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Oh, that happened recently? Yeah. Yeah, just oh, yeah. like days ago. Yeah. Uh, uh, what, was, the assistant gun. director or something, or the yeah. or director of photography? Yeah. Photography, yeah. yeah. That can't still that be was, happening. That's crazy. But, yeah. okay. that, that she was, died just uh, maybe two or three days ago. Yeah. <clears throat> That's what you call a topical reference. I, uh, <laughs> but and, if, uh, if, like, if we... If we weren't expected to suspend our imagination as we walked into the movie theater, imagine how long we'd have to be there to get any events to happen, you know? I mean, it takes five minutes to get beyond the Earth's atmosphere, as um, Captain Kirk found out recently, <laughs> William Shatner, mm -hmm. and five minutes to come back again. But to go any further than that, it's intensely boring. I mean, how many days did it take for them to get to the moon in 69? I think it was four. So, And that's traveling at way supersonic speed. I mean, absolutely. really, really, really fast. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. And so, so we, we've really got to put up with some exaggeration. Otherwise, we don't get the entertainment. You know, we got to wonder, uh, you know, if, if Jesus or Muhammad left, left the world, yeah. you know, like floating up or on a winged horse. Yeah. Yes. We know that there's no heaven right above the clouds. You know, right, 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 right. right. They didn't know that, though. They didn't know that. So if you could actually, and, and Dredd, I'll, I'm just going to this peep, peep. If Jesus flew out and people saw it, he's traveling at least speed of light let's just give him speed of light i'll give it to him even though we could see him i'll give it to him we know the universe observable is like 14 trillion light years across he's still going oh, to heaven a lot more than that. <laughs> like, <laughs> only, like yeah. a couple thousand years ago he's still going like we're lucky if he's out of the galaxy right by now it's crazy yeah how is anyway. he going to get to the speed of light that's the problem because yeah. it, it doesn't unless have he, to yeah unless he accelerates very very right. slowly it's uh, going to take uh, months it's, it's rough but if he does if he does accelerate fast then he's yeah. going to leave his brain behind isn't he <laughs> of course there's time dilation do we got dread go ahead yeah so you know, I, I understand, of course, like everyone, that uh, the suspension of belief or disbelief is critical in appreciating, uh, you know, some fictions. Um, 
I guess the concern I have is that uh, some people tend to carry that over into their real life yeah. and that it has real yeah. life impacts. Yeah. And in fact, it really is, a, you know, it, it almost supports a religious belief um, yes. because of, you know, it's a continued suspension of disbelief. Yep. You, open, yes. you open the book of Genesis and you really do have to suspend your disbelief in order yes. to appreciate that Moses, you know, parted the, uh, the Red Sea, uh, that kind of thing. Um, sure. And that, and that's why I think it's, it has, it has the potential of negatively impacting uh, people who don't have those critical thinking skills to uh, parse that out, you know, George, yeah. I want to throw this out. I want to throw a question out at you and, um, and see how you, you were raised an atheist. So you never had the religious indoctrination, but did you ever fall into like any sci-fi, uh, series or serial or book series where you're like, yeah, I never had a chance to believe in Jesus, but you know, uh, I, 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 Dick Tracy could totally punch one guy in the face and knock him out or whatever, you, whatever your cup of tea was back then. Like, were you able to suspend your sense of disbelief for any form of media? Well, I have a confession to make uh -oh. to all of you and, and our listening audience and all the ships at sea. Uh, I am a science fiction junkie. Nice. You know, uh, uh, if, if I could put it in a, in a syringe and inject it into my aorta, I would do that. So it's science fiction and chocolate. <laughs> okay, I thought um, it was separately. <laughs> so, <John. laughs> and, <laughs> so yes, I, I grew up reading science fiction and enjoying it. And uh, mm. uh, but I could see bad writing. You know, I'm, mm. I I can't I can't handle bad writing. And a lot of a lot of science fiction is really cruddy <laughs> writing. Yeah, it is, yeah, especially now. But when everyone's trying. And, to so, uh, but I you know I, I had a, a great love for Ray Bradbury. And he wrote, he wrote junk too, you know. Sure, sure. <laughs> Even Isaac Asimov had some stinkers, right? But yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, I don't know what else to say. I mean, the, the, the concept of what if, but um, unlike, well, in a way it's like, I have experience that sort of parallels dead pirates mm. in that I was working in the record industry back in the early 60s and, you know, could could witness all the artifice of that, and, you know, the top 40 situation. And it seems like um, uh, what, the thought that was coming to me from our discussion so far is that uh, the human race, maybe, you know, the audience at large, keeps suffering from uh, technology fatigue in the special effects. And so we need more and more whiz bang, you know, some we get more impact than the last it. guy. Yeah. What's that? We get desensitized to like the level of CGI that's put into shows. Yeah. Now people decide right. to go on top of it and on top and on top. So, you know, now it's like we have to be entertained by news on right. TV. And, you know, no news story will get aired now unless it is accompanied by music. Uh, Think about it. I, you know, and you go on YouTube and everybody's YouTubes, you know, you're going to fix your engine on your car. It's accompanied by music. It's, you know, it's all even, shtick. It's all theater. You know? Can I have a rant about that, too? Because even a, a documentary, which you might consider to be similar to a lecture, hmm. has to have a background music doesn't it oh, and I, I can imagine i can imagine when i was a teacher having to put a record on to do a lesson to <laughs> even documentaries about ants have to be like and this ant's name was jerry and then here comes the evil ant and now they're fighting against each other and there's action cuts and stuff it's just like what are you guys doing larry yeah. i saw you with your hands up what's up did you yeah um you know how i go on about the soul you know for, before oh we he's still on the soul it. Heaven I knew I hell. couldn't get it through. I couldn't get yeah. it through. I knew we couldn't um, get it through. Well, let's talk about the physics of the soul. I mean, sure, sure, sure. That, that's why great. is it that whenever somebody reports the soul, you know, it's not naked, it's got clothes on. Are they like ethereal clothes? And they're always like floating just above the ground or standing on the floor. Does gravity have effect? Larry, there's a there's an ethereal H and M where everybody gets their soul clothes from. 
Uh, and, yeah. Okay. And then they come with tiny little platform shoes yeah. with the polycarbonate heels right. that you can like stand three feet off the ground with. Everybody yeah. needs well, one of the things though, like, let's say that a person died in a castle and the, and the ghost haunts the castle. Well, mm -hmm. if the ghost is not affected by material things, he wouldn't be affected by gravity. If, if he's not affected by gravity, then how is he still in the, the on earth in the castle? Yeah. Why is he flying after it? Yeah. Well, the, the earth would have left a long time ago. Right, well, right, um, right. It just makes no sense. No, yeah. no. The physics, By the way, I mean. I'm, I'm going to dress my soul at Gap. I'm sorry. It's not cool enough. I'd like to read the label on the jacket of a ghost and yeah. see where, where he shops. Yeah. 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 Oh, there you go. Okay. Dread, so, what's up? Well, anyway, I was going to say um, there are, I mean, I've seen some really good films where you know it's science fiction it's informed by science um one movie i'm actually looking forward to is uh, is dune because oh, that, that's that is that's science fiction that's true science fiction yep. so there's yep. there's technology there's uh you know there's politics there's uh, uh ecology it's and a this space is, opera it, but it's it's informed by science. Yeah, you know yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah, and yeah. It, it has a, a real basis in the physical world and the physics of the universe, and we can appreciate the spectacle without having to employ to such a great extent the uh, suspension of disbelief. I agree. I mean, when you look at Godzilla and Okra or whatever the two monsters are, you, you, I mean, it's just. You, it was good when it was in the 1950s sci-fi genre, but the stuff that you like, the stuff that comes out now is just, I don't know. I just, I, I don't just, watch it. It just, I just balk at it. Just to clarify, stuff. did you say Godzilla and Okra? Did I miss something? Is Maybe there a Oprah. new one? Oprah? Oh, Oprah? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Okay, okay. I don't know. So whatever the monster is, Megatron or... Okay, okay, okay. Uh, yeah. I will say this. I love science fiction movies. I put them in two categories. One where there's like one scientific thing and everyone's freaking out about that scientific thing. Those are the ones I don't like. Those are the ones that are like your time travel. Oh, I came up with the MacGuffin. Everyone's talking about the MacGuffin and I get tired of talking about it for like half yeah. hour of the movie. And then there's the ones that are like Dune or ones like Inter Interstellar is the, uh, that example of, we have this new weird thing and everyone's going to keep talking about it for the rest of the whole movie. Or movies where there's already an established world that has science that's futuristic in it and no one's talking about it because you only care about the story and everyone's right. already jaded about this technology and you see beautiful things, but no one's like, eh, it's, it's not a big deal. No one cares about it. So like mm -hmm. the original Star Wars movies where like people have lightsabers and people aren't like, your sword is a laser. Now the Star Wars movies are like, I have a special laser sword and they're very explicit about it, but it's like, it was cooler when you didn't talk about it because that right. was just part of the world. And yeah. I feel like science fiction is a good job in coloring worlds and how people appreciate it. Cause we have technology here that we don't talk about every single conversation. And mm -hmm. it just goes to make the world in my head, the, the reality of a conversation more interesting when people take things, certain things for granted. And my head is like, ah, oh, that's because it's already a part of the natural world. John yeah. Richards, what's up? Sorry for that rant. I've got a confession. Talk to me. Talk to me. This is unreal. I know. No, <laughs> <laughs> so it is a place you could get there. You could. I hope. Oh, yeah, I, I took the photo. Yes, yes, it's my copyright. No. But, uh, <laughs> it's not in my bedroom at the moment where I am. Right. <laughs> right. So uh, it does worry me that sometimes some people who maybe haven't had such a good scientific education, or maybe they. Yeah, uh, pre probably. predisposed to believing things because they see them, right? Uh, and it does have an effect. Like, for example, thanks to Jaws, sharks are unreasonably feared. You know that the the numbers of deaths caused by sharks every year, I think, is vastly else exceeded by the number of deaths caused by spiders or coconuts. Right? Yes. Yes. Right. <laughs> But, but I don't want to be the guy who gets bit. <laughs> I didn't say they were harmless. No, but if Jaws was about <laughs> if Jaws was about mosquitoes, people would be like, "Oh, these are the things that are killing way more people yeah, than anything else." Exactly. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's yeah. a good point. I think Jurassic Park has probably set back paleontology by at least forty years. <laughs> yes, you know, yes. Like, and, and, and what about what about Planet of the Apes? Surely that reinforces the idea that we're descended from them. Yeah, it does make the conversation more complicated when you're like, it's not 
a descendant. It's like a bifurcation off a common ancestor. It's kind of, it's, it's complicated. It's, it's nuanced though. I have found this. Um, and I'll say this, I think, okay, uh, I'll say this, um, similar to how lies will always be more delicious than the truth. I found that nuance is always going to be more elusive than ego. Yes. And yeah. we tend to believe things that appeal to our ego more, even if the yeah. thing is counterintuitive and just flatly wrong or unsupported with any evidence. If it makes me feel good, I'll believe it. And nuance is all about letting you know, maybe you don't know as much as you think you do. And there might be more colors to this particular topic than we're willing to let on. And I find like movies are really good at just appealing to ego, but not about nuance. And I would love to see someone take an attempt, even with documentaries, which I feel are skewing more towards entertainment and ego, but a, a discussion in a movie format about the lack of knowing things and always being willing to have more, openness to nuance. And to be honest with you, I only get that from like obscure dramas or things that have more time to spend on subjects and not from movies itself. George, what's up? <laughs> well, I have a movie for you. Talk to me, talk to me, talk to uh, me. It's, uh, it was shot in Mongolia and the name of the movie is Ca The Cave of the Yellow Dog. Oh. The Cave of the Yellow Dog. And uh, I'm not going to say anything more about it because okay. there was a surprise and I don't want to blow the surprise. I, will, I don't I'll, want, I'll, want to say what it is. I'm going to check that Not out. even a synopsis? Nothing, nothing, nothing. I love it. I love it. I'm, I'm definitely checking it out right now. That's good. Cave of the Yellow Dog, if you're interested, look, look it up. Also, Twilight Zone, in my head, is one of the best shows that was ever on television. If you watch every single one of those episodes, they've done more in a half hour, 20 minute format oh, yeah. than most people have done with an entire movie series. In terms of just punctuating a point about the human condition, it's never about the technology, it's never about the twist, it's never about whatever monster of the week is there, it's about the human condition and realizing we are a complicated species that are controlled by our vulnerabilities and until we recognize them, that's when we have power to overcome them. It's just a beautiful thing. John, what's up? John, what's up? I saw you. I don't know whether this will travel, but I'll try it. If your theory about nuance is correct, Ty. Talk to me. Then, then the, the problem of unreality being convincing, excessively convincing, should have been worse when movies were in black and white. Should have been worse when movies were in black and white. Is there a joke in here? I can't, I, I'm always listening for the pun. I'm, I'm not, I, <laughs> I didn't think it would travel. Like, <laughs> somewhere between here and across the Atlantic, <laughs> the sense got garbled. It's okay, yeah, it's okay. I'm ready to catch the next one. I'm ready to catch the next one. I was trying, I was trying. Dread, what's up, what's up? Uh, I was gonna mention, you had mentioned Twilight Zone. Another one um, was uh, Electric Dreams which was an anthology of Philip K. Dick's uh, writings. And he's a well-known uh, science fiction writer. But again, along the, the, uh, the lines of revealing um, the frailties of the human condition, right. as opposed to, you know, superhuman feats of strength and all that kind of stuff. Right. It's amazing. It's amazing. I love. I wish they make television like that today. I think they're trying to. I think Twilight Zone has a, a reboot. I have not checked out yet. I know Black Mirror exists. Funny thing about Black Mirror, I didn't know it was made in England until like the fourth episode. I literally thought everyone was just speaking like a gibberish language and you weren't supposed to understand what anyone was saying until like it was like... Oh, is this English? <laughs> I was like, I don't understand what they're saying. Now I understand it. And I was like, there's captions here. There's English posters in the background. They have to be speaking a language. And I'm sorry about that. That's me personally. I didn't realize there's a variety of so many intricate yeah. accents in, in England. It's not just posh or scouse. It's yeah. like 40 other village to village. They can vary. It's, it's nuts. It was nuts. It was nuts. I wasn't ready for it. We can't, uh, we can't understand each other. It's crazy. <laughs> Larry, uh, final comments before we go out for the break. No, I'm ready to go for it, I guess. Let's do it. All righty. This is the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM, right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. And we'll be right back after this short break. Nice. 
Uh, let's do countdown. Five, mm -hmm. four, three, two. Welcome back to the second half of the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Uh, I'm Doubter Five, and we're on WOZO Radio 103.9 LPFM right here in Knoxville, Tennessee. Now let's talk about the Atheist Society of Knoxville. ASK was founded in 2002. We're in our 19th year. We have over a thousand members and we have weekly in-person meetings in Knoxville's Old City at Barley's Taproom and Pizzeria. Look for us out on the patio. If you'd like to join our Tuesday evening Zoom meetup, you can email us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org or let's chat se at gmail.com. You can find us online, that's Knoxville Atheists, at, on Facebook, meetup.com, or at knoxvilleatheist.org, or Google Knoxville Atheists. It's just that simple. By the way, if you don't live in Knoxville, you can still go to Meetup and search for an atheist group in your town. Don't find one? Star, Star one. one. Star one. All right. Well, I'm back. Where do you want to pick up? Pick up? We are talking about the physics of unreality, and I almost want to make a point that I appreciate it when shows do make the effort to show how boring it is, to show how frail human beings actually are in a sci-fi setting. And one of my favorite examples is Star Trek, the old school versions, where they would take floor, if you listen to a conversation when they're in an elevator, they will go down a series of floors that is always a consistent number of floors in their world because the sound engineer has a map of what floor they're going from in their in their ship down to the next the, their location and will chime as they're speaking to represent the exact number of floors they're going and if it takes a whole minute for them to get there he will do seven chimes throughout their conversation in the background and it will be a minute long conversation in the elevator before they come out and i'm like i love that level of detail george you had something about <laughs> star trek what's up well, you reminded me, uh, my favorite old original Star Trek effect is the uh, um, the tractor beam. Okay. Yeah. Which has specific music that goes with it. And I really like the, the way the whole thing goes together. The, the tractor beams. <laughs> sure, sure. So um, I, w I was going to tell this little story about um, how I, uh, on my job at the time, I I was um, I ordered a tricorder, and I I had to find a tricorder, and so I called the store. You're gonna have a to Star explain Trek what a tricorder is. In Cal. Yeah. What's a tricorder? For well, a tricorder is okay. It's a little handheld device that Spock, the science and technology engineer, I think on Star Trek, he carried around. He carried it around with him, and and. The captain would say, Spock, tricorder readings. And Spock would look at his tricorder and twiddle the dials a little bit. And he would say, there are five life form readings on the other side of that hill. Or what the, uh, the well, environment is made out of, or uh, the, uh, the oxygen and the, and the atmosphere. Anything that, that takes a reading will take a reading on the tricorder. It should have been a multi-quarter, not a tricorder. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, it was called a tricorder. So I called up, I called up this uh, Star Trek store in Los Angeles, and I said, uh, I said I'd like to buy a tricorder. And the fellow promptly said, Do you want, do you want a dummy tricorder or do you want a working tricorder? Okay, <laughs> that's my joke. Yeah. <laughs> the tri working one, I assume, just had blinking lights. <laughs> And maybe some sound. No, so some other time I'll t I'll tell you all the the real context of this story, but <laughs> that's enough. Dred, what's up? I think one hundred three point nine FM WZO Radio, Knoxville. Dredd, I think that we're 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 living in a world of shtick, you know, and a shtick is a word that's really hard to explain. Do you know it, Dread Pirate? Have you ever I heard do. it? In I the do. I film do know industry? what shtick is. Yeah. It's kind of like your modus operandi, How would you, really. It's kind of a modus but operandi. But it's, it's your modus operandi hmm? as a, well, of, of your stage business. You know, you're, as an actor, let's say, yeah. it's, you know, 
like if you're a comedian and you play the violin like Jack Benny. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, that's what. Yeah, it's, 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 it's sort of the thing you pull gimmick. back on. It's kind of yeah. a gimmick too. Yeah, it's kind of the same. Oh, I you, see this. I see what this. What you wrap it's what you wrap your act in. But dread, what yeah. were you going to? What were you and, going to? and of course, it it can also mean like stage business. It, it's a word that's not quite defined all, all the yeah. time. But you know, there's there's a shtick that happens, like on YouTube, for instance. It's shtick for people to start their YouTube video by saying, what's up, YouTube? I mean, what a stupid question that is. But it's shtick. Everybody does it. Yeah. Can we say, what's up, Alexa? You could. <laughs> Drip yeah, Iron, what's up? <laughs> so uh, extending, uh -huh. on our, extending on our topic, I, I was... Uh, it carries over into some of the, the stuff you see on television, uh, particularly on Discovery, channels like Discovery and History, and another one called Detour, where there, you know, there's ancient, ancient aliens and, uh, you know, uh, ghost hunters and, yes. and all this kind of stuff. And it, and it, yeah. and it really is, it's, I think it draws the uh, gullibility of people who are, are set up to, okay. to buy into this stuff. And right. then all of a sudden, Discovery Channel, which originally was touted as a science forum. I know! You're hurting me so <laughs> is, hard is, right now. It's been totally debased yes. um, by, yes. uh, by all these uh, television shows that, you know, appeal to the lowest. Absolute it is! You're right! You're history, absolutely correct! History channel how, we, too. how the great yeah. has fallen. It's amazing. It's totally true. It's totally, History Channel is even worse. You used right. yeah. the history stuff, but now it's just Game of Thrones. It is. Ro yeah. Romans. Yeah. It's so yeah. bad. It has about it's as much relevance as music you know, yeah. TV to music. Yeah, yeah. MTV is no longer showing music <laughs> and videos. Yeah. Discovery is not yeah. discovering anything. History doesn't have history. AMC is yeah. showing things like Home Alone. It's just like the third one, not yeah. even like the first one it's like that's <laughs> these aren't even american classics no one watches the third home alone movie no one likes no that no we all know i that. so agree it's, it's a terrible shame that discovery and history channels have gone that way yeah. but as as you said dread they're appealing to the lowest common denominator because yeah. that's the market isn't it and the manufacturers of entertainment are very keen to commercialize as far as possible so i blame for, for all of the imaginary monsters I blame the manufacturers of Monster Munch. Hmm. <laughs> I will throw this out. I think sort of um, reverse engineering. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> physics of rea unreality. Like when a show like Mythbusters got very popular, I was concerned as a scientist because they were making definitive claims off of one test that right. largely in most cases weren't repeatable. They, and we call that in science an N of one. You did one test. Right. And that is not conclusive of anything. There's no statistical points that you can make on an N of one. So mm -hmm. you did a test and you're like, ha, myth busted. It's like, no, you got to do that like 15 times at least just to get like an approximate average. And even then yeah. you can say my test as I've designed it shows that it's not feasible here. Right. And other people would look mm -hmm. at that test and say, okay, well, what can we do to improve it? It's constant discussion, but they are marketing basically yeah. television entertainment as science and got rich off of doing it. And at the yes. detriment of ex yes. changing the way how people think about science. And yes. so you go on YouTube, I'm sorry, last, my last part of my rant, you go on YouTube and you find people who are like, I'm blank, blank, blank on YouTube. What's up. <laughs> right. And then they do one dumb test. That's terrible. Yeah. And they're like, and that's how you break iPod phones. And that's why my Microsoft zoom is better than the iPod. It's like, no, no, you yeah. have yeah. to do more tests than that to come with the definitive yeah. conclusions. So, so another issue that has come up uh, in recent uh, months also is the replication error, uh, the replication crisis, right? Yeah. So uh, a lot of these, uh, you know, peer-reviewed studies uh, out there have not been replicated, and yet they're being touted as uh, the definitive answer of whatever they, you know, scientists happen to be uh, trying to research. And the scary um, and, thing on top of that, or is it replicated only by one person in one lab, right? And yeah, like, that's what I mean. Is that you know, it's it's the test is done, the hypothesis is yeah. demonstrated. You know, they've done the experiment, but nobody has gone to replicate the experiment in order to verify right. that the experimental process is done correctly, that there weren't confounding variables, uh, yada yada yada. So yeah. um, it puts right. it it actually puts science on a very uh, thin ice in some respects. That yes. you yes. know the rigor 
of val yes. uh, verification, falsifiability, you know, Karl Popper and all that kind of stuff yes. Yes. is not being followed through on. Yeah. And that is really leading, that's giving science a bad rep. L let me back yeah. up. Yes, it's giving science a bad rap. It's not putting science on thin ice. It's putting people's appreciation for science on yes. thin ice. Because yes. if anything, yes. science is putting that on yeah. high alert, and which is why we're talking yeah. about it now. Yeah, John, let's I couldn't, go. Agree. I couldn't agree more. You're, you're speaking my words, Dread. I think because yes. it's it's this misrepresentation of anecdotes n one mm -hmm. as having significance that has devalued science over the decades. So I, yes. I dislike the, what I call the Disneyfication of Disneyfication. Uh, society. Right. Oh, that's so good. And, and, and this that. is really why I wanted to talk about the physics on reality, yeah. because that is really is lending it all this support and people are just gobbling it up. So let entertainment. me, I, let me and that's another why, one. Can, can I just finish this? Yeah, go for it, go for it, go for it. Thank you. That's that's why we were in such a mess at the beginning of the pandemic. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, oh, absolutely. And we've got absolutely. To, we've actually got to thank the virus for giving real science a platform. Right. right. Um, I'll throw another one out that always bothered me is whenever you have like a CSI crime scene investigation show where they go, they take the evidence and they take them to the lab, and the lab <laughs> is always as a lab manager. It always irks me when people aren't wearing their lab coats or PPP. We have a very good lab. People maintain safety standards. But the ones on TV should be shut down immediately because you have people with open lab coats and, like, gel frost hair, no PPE, no gloves. And very no poor eyes. lighting. Very and poor back, lighting. And in the back, and, yeah, background, there's, like, neon lighting and bubbling Erlenmeyer flasks just yeah, on yeah. tables with food coloring and nothing's yeah. labeled. And it's like, <laughs> what is going on? And why is there one oh. bottle? Pumping liquid into this bottle. What's going on there? Why isn't that? That's right. What kind of the, the only on? thing they're missing are tribbles. <laughs> Yes, yes. <laughs> like why do you need to do that to show that something scientific like in a real science lab it should just be everything's like you know crystalline and clear and white that's right and, and it's put away if you're not using it and put away if it's not using it. like what is all this stuff and there's people walking around on laptops yeah. and they're not watching where they're going it makes me so upset i know it's and not a can... physics issue but it's a policy yeah, well issue. it is it's reality or unreality and, really bothers and you me. can count you can count the number of liquids chemical liquids that are actually colored mm -hmm. on the fingers of one hand. Yeah, it's like bright primary colors, green, blue, yes. red, and yellow. It's just like, is this all Mountain Dew? What's going on here? They're What's all <laughs> you who? George. You know, I, if, I, if I may be so bold as to assume a, an undertone to this whole discussion, it's that as a civilization, as I know it, um, we are always confusing theater with mm -hmm. reality. Yes. Yes. Yeah. You know. You're absolutely right. And I think one of the biggest is that our undertone. I mean. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, and 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 the people who present the artifice of the theater that we're cooked on are very very good at it. Yes, and that's nothing new. You know, the ancient what is it? The ancient Greeks were great at this too. Yes, you know, yes. at their theater. George, I'm going to throw out the perfect example. I think that you have to touch on, and it, I believe it is um, WWE. It is the absolute. Uh, John, that is uh, worldwide wrestling don't, uh, enterprise yeah, yeah, or federation. Yeah. You know, okay, okay, great, great, great. Yeah. There's no better example of live suspension of disbelief than watching a guy get slapped on the chest and being like, oh, he stopped his heart for five seconds. He's on the ground. He's, he's dead. And then he walks up and he gets away. It's like, he died. But the furries yeah. brought him back to life so we can do the next match. And everyone's yeah. like, well, that's what happened. That's what happened. I know that because yeah. he did that last time. Undertaker, he dies all the time every episode. Larry, what's up? I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, yeah, well, that's a good example. But, uh, I mean, consider the state of the art of special effects in movies nowadays. It's getting harder and harder to tell what's actually true. I mean, yeah. what's actually true and real and what you can expect from what they portray as possible mm -hmm. using special effects. Yeah, exactly. 
Larry, I hear yeah. you, but the thing is, you can actually make something convincing with a special effect. Whereas with worldwide wrestling, that's just two sweaty guys <laughs> in underwear <laughs> slapping each other, and people will still eat yeah. popcorn. Believe people will go home and think, "I know how to fight" because I saw that guy jump off a rope. And yeah, as I long as there's a folding thing. chair nearby. Yeah, and it won't hurt because I saw a guy do it and he didn't get hurt. <laughs> yeah. So I, it won't hurt me either. And then you have people get injured and hurt in backyard right. wrestling all the time. Dread, what's up? Well, I was I made a reference last week to uh, uh, the, the uh, allegory of the cave. Hmm. Um, you all remember that from philosophy. Socrates. Yeah, Socrates, the allegory of the cave. So I, I kind of liken science as to that one person that ventured out and and then came back to tell everyone, hey, man, you're just watching these uh, images being, uh, you know, held before Project. the fire. Yeah. Hey, man. And, and film <laughs> is putting people back in the cave. Oh. <laughs> you know, film in, is putting in people in back in the cave. Yeah. Science, science got everyone out, and now <clears throat> film is putting people back in. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I'll, I'll, take a, I'll take a little counter stab at that, because I do feel like there's a, uh, an issue of consent when I'm watching a movie, sometimes I do it for an escape. Sometimes I want a good story, right? And so I am purposely putting my critical thinking here so that I can be more open to experiencing and enjoying whatever I'm seeing in front of me. But I want people to have accountability. I don't want the, to say films are making you less critical. I want people to be like, when you are, it's your fault if you aren't turning your critical back on, yeah. like if you're critical thinking back on after you walk out of a movie theater, like you need to be able to do that. So it's not the movie's right. fault. It's your fault if you're not doing that. And that's yeah. why we got to make sure people engage their critical thinking. Not all times. Then if you have to turn it off to have fun, go for it, but turn it back on when <laughs> you come back to interact with human society. And I like think the like little, the little knob there that data has, right. Just yeah. Click off, click on. Dread, I was thinking of things that you were saying way back, like even last week with like, how great would it be if we could turn off pain? Because like our brain's like, Hey, mate, we're in pain. We're in pain. It's like, I get it. I get it. Can we, can we please focus on whatever else I got to get done? Mm -hmm. Like, How can we improve evolution in a way or prove our bodies? I would also love for there to be like a little meter for your critical oh. thinking gauge. And yeah, if, it's yeah, like, yeah. if it goes down to below a certain level, it's like red LEDs. But if it's in green, you're like, okay, this guy's thinking critically. It's great. Turn it off. Turn it back on. Notifications are on. All right. Yeah, this guy's yeah, trying yeah. to steal your money. Just, yeah. hey, what's up, Larry? What's going on? <laughs> yeah. Um, one thing, though, that you may, you, know, you may or may not be have in mind is that you're a well-trained scientist. Your you know, critical standards are very high. Uh, there are a lot of people out there that are not so high. Mm -hmm. And then they go into the theater and they don't exactly know where to draw that line of what's right. real and what's not real. And that's what, and one of the things I was trying to bring up earlier. Uh, and what's worse is they have the vote. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and again, it, vote. <laughs> it is about the response. There is a responsibility. And I think part of it falls upon the producers of film in order to, uh, you know, make sure that uh, they're not oh. misleading the whole, you know, uh, populations with these really outlandish notions about how the world works, because it, I really seriously believe it does have a real world impact when people yeah. walk out of oh, theaters, does, don't have that switch, go home yeah. and jump off their roof thinking that they can fly or right. know, some yeah. stupid thing. Don't try this. Uh, yeah. Exaggeration. Don't yes. try the, yeah, don't try this at all. <laughs> I mean, the don't fact worry. that they've oh. got to put yes. disclaimers like that, yeah. Um, yeah. Is, yeah. Right. is telling in itself because, right. you know, now they're just covering their butts in order not to be sued, yeah. uh, you know, for, you know, gross negligence and misrepresenting, oh. you know, something that right. can't happen that they depicted could happen, you know? Right. Yeah. George. <laughs> well, um, Facebook is is in the hot seat right now. <laughs> I don't know where to go with that one. Um, people, you know, um, um, I, I bump into people here where I live who tell me uh, certain political realities that they believe. And I say, that's BS. Where did you hear that? And they say, oh, I heard it on Facebook. That's how I know it's true. Yeah, they have their own <laughs> realm of reality in, on the but, internet. But the other thing... Yeah, the other thing that, um, that I'm th going to throw out is, you know, megachurches present spectacle mm -hmm. and um, 
schools. Are they doing the same thing? You know, yes. are they yes. presenting they the physics yep. of re No, and they're doing it because they know it works. Like that's why they become even more theatrical because they know that works. Mm -hmm. They know that's appealing. I, when you think about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ and the pictures that you have versus how it probably happened in reality, in the theater version, there's people lining the streets because everybody heard this is happening. And there's Roman soldiers in the front and there's Roman soldiers in the back. And there's Jesus Christ carrying this giant lumber piece of wood with his sweaty abs. And he's just like, oh, this is so heavy, but I'm doing it anyway for your sins. And everyone's just like quiet, <laughs> horrified, being like, I can't believe this is happening to such a good man. Probably in reality, it ha who knows? It could have happened at midnight. No one even knew. There was probably no crowds. There was no internet. There was, you know how hard it is to get 16 people even just to show up at like a, <laughs> either at like a party or like a volunteer shelter or a suitcase. People aren't doing that. People aren't leaving their homes to watch some guy carry a piece of wood. It's not that boring. Come on. I, 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 I just, you know, the drama of how we like to envision history versus the way how it may have actually been is always going to be desperately uh different from the two of each other and i feel like we like to color and romance because we love the theatrics and christians know that pastors know that people in charge know that and they will do the same thing whether it's george washington on a boat looking very proud and regal on uh, in that picture or people signing the declaration of independence and they're all wearing their super wigs and stuff like that in a perfectly well-lit room even though it's like the 1700s how do you even get that right we, we we fall subject to that every single time. Yes. John Richards, uh, yeah, yeah. get ready to take us out. What's up? Well, I just want to say, yeah. of course, un science is an embarrassing way of making unreality come true. I mean, I, I have a much better communicator than Captain Kirk has. Sure you do. <laughs> Listen, I'll throw that out, too. Have you ever seen Quantum Leap? There was a show where a guy was yeah. literally jumping yeah, yeah. into people's bodies. Yeah. I got to explain it for everybody else on the show. Scott Bakula, for the millennials. Yeah. Scott Bakula, he jumps into people's bodies, and he helps them out. And then he jumps yeah. to another body, but he's never doing it for profit. He's just trying to get back to his original body. And meanwhile, yeah. he has a friend that can find him through space time and show up to his coordinates as a hologram and he will yeah. tell him what happens in the future to help scott bacula try to help that person's life so that he can jump into the next life it's like a whole karma situation but the yeah, thing yeah. is that that little i forgot what it was even called but that device that his friend had was leave. yeah it was def it was basically an iphone it was basically just a smartphone even though it was like this huge huge piece of thing <laughs> it's like a giant thing in his hand he's like it says here tomorrow the stock market's gonna go up two percent and that was like the biggest technology advance for like back then but it's like of course yeah. like anyone can do that anyone can totally do that it's like it's gonna rain tomorrow let me push it into these buttons it's like yo that's just a weather yeah. it's a weather app we know we know what those things are and, and the latest thing of course is yeah. there's there's a girl being born i think in the states who's genome was completely red while she was an embryo and the decision was made to let her go to term and get born okay now think about that because it means that in future you can have a little bit of cell taken out of your embryo and you can have it red and you can decide hmm this baby's got blue eyes i don't want that give it to the yeah. abortion man yeah is no, it technically more like abortion they could just point? change it they could change it yeah they could also change it too that's, that's yeah, yeah. Too. Yeah. yes yes that's right give her red anime eyes uh <laughs> we got five minutes care. left let's do some hot takes um let's see john final words what do you think about this topic before we head out we won't plug yet but what's your final words on the subject uh, of yeah okay here? well it, it does worry me because for example our girls watch a cartoon show it's um, an internet cartoon show. And the, the characters have all got very huge eyes. Yeah. And they're all females. Mm. And they all are obsessed with their appearance and makeup and walking Pretty on the, I need to the, out the model, yeah. the, the model uh, uh, catwalk. And, and it's giving my children an impression that the only thing that matters for girls is the external appearance. Sure, mm -hmm. sure, sure. I don't like sure. it. You no. know, uh, maybe a bit of real talk, but when I was growing up, black beauty standards were never on TV. You And, yeah. and whenever they were, it's a black person trying to straighten out their hair or blank their hair blonde yeah. or yeah. bleach their skin or be, you know, closer mm -hmm. to the white conventional 
uh, beauty yeah. standards. So Go yeah, ahead. those affect people definitely growing up. Larry, yes. um, on, and yeah, it's important to know outside of the physics, outside of the echo chamber of media, that there's a whole real world out there that's subject to real physics where real things matter and mm -hmm. yes. real things have an impact and we should high, highly value that more than what's being yes. told to us through a particular agenda or a particular form of media. Uh, yes. but, but Larry, uh, final thoughts on the physics of unreality. Well, I think they're unreal, <laughs> as, as it were. Uh, I mean, you can one more last stab at souls. Uh, no, I don't want to go there again. But uh, <laughs> again, you know, you can't have uh, Muhammad splitting the moon. I mean, how how would he do it? The moon's a huge object, uh, but it, it, in case we think that unreality is something that's that's come up with special effects in the current day, no, they've been going on forever. I mean, think of um, Paul Bunyan and Blue Ox. Any yeah, yeah. legend is uh, unreality, and generally when they do things that are magical or, um, you know, prophetic, you know, mm -hmm. it's all it all peters out when you look at it with the eye of science sure yeah. i i'll throw one thing out there is something called a rule of cool whereas if it looks cool you're willing to let it slide and there's no better example mm. you guys won't know about this but a show yeah, called dragon because ball. it makes a good story right there's a show called least. dragon ball z where there's an evil villain who uses the power of the moon <laughs> to get stronger and so the yeah. good guys destroy the moon using energy blasts mm. and that worked for one enemy and then Two seasons later, another enemy was doing the exact same thing. And they're like, we got to blow up the moon. And they blow up the moon again. But it was on Earth. And there was only one moon. And they blew it up two seasons ago. But we let it slide because it looked cool. We right, let right. it slide because it looked cool. It's like, they blew up the moon again. Yeah. I loved it the mm -hmm. first time. So let, let's just let it happen again. George, would love to know your final thoughts on the physics of unreality. Um, I, it's this, is there a one of us in this room right now who don't love well done artifice? Because I do. I do too. No matter how much, no matter how much I know what's going on behind the scrim, mm. that's a special kind of a curtain in theater. I love it when it's done well. I really am a sucker for yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. Sometimes I like it's hard to <clears throat> if, a, Sorry, if a car crash doesn't explode five times, I'm changing. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> yeah, how bad would it be if the secret agent was just push, pushing bullets into a car and it wasn't exploding for like the whole movie? And you're just like, but, this used to work. What's going on here? I shot yeah, these yeah. red barrels. Nothing's going on. Yeah. Uh, Dread, final thoughts. Uh, you're you know, that, it's funny you say that because there, I think it was... Um, uh, oh, what's that, uh, Jump Street, uh, the third one, uh, where the two main characters there, they encounter several situations on a car chase yeah. where it, uh, an explosion should have happened right. and didn't. And they go, wow, that didn't happen. And then it was finally a, a, a truck full of chickens or something. And that exploded. Uh, <laughs> so, so that was kind of a you know a, a funny twist on the physics of unreality. I love it. I love it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I did want to just before we close out, uh, I mm -hmm. wanted to uh, just mention uh, a petition that I had started, which uh, you can find at uh, change.org, and it's uh, World Truth 2021, mm -hmm. and it's uh, and it's an appeal for uh, something similar to the 1914. Christmas Day truce, but an intentional appeal to the UN to um, yeah. have a break from hostilities as a step towards uh, more reasonable discourse, uh, towards uh, peaceful resolution in a world of peace. So I, I just it. wanted to push that. I love it. Ah, uh, man, now I can't transition back to exploding cars. I had a whole story <laughs> on that. You ended on world peace. Uh, Dread Pirate, where can we find your stuff at? Well, you can find me. I live stream this uh, on Sunday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific Standard Time. My channel is M-I-N-D-P-Y-R-A-T-E, Mind Pirate. Fantastic. So check me out and subscribe, please. Cool. Uh, John Richards, where can we find you? I'm on Free Thought Productions channel. Please like, subscribe, set the notifications, all that sort of thing. But last night... Not only did I launch, um, well, launch, it's a regular thing. It's not the first. Global Atheist News, which I know yeah. we're maybe going to talk about another time because of the uh, AI priests and pastors. 
But I also had a very interesting conversation with ex-Christian Erin, who is one of the presenters for the ACA. And she's a, she's a great conversationalist. Take yeah. a look. It is, it is good to find people who are still good at, you know, even if it's over Zoom, just a face-to-face -face conversation. It's such a rewarding experience. Mm -hmm. And as we step <clears throat> out of... What is ACA? Atheist uh, Community of Austin. Austin. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, I would not recommend that you subscribe to my channel. I would recommend that you check out Global Atheist News, hosted by John Richards. It is a fantastic <laughs> weekly update of everything going on in the world. Next week, I want to talk about one of the stories that he brought up with AI being taking over the church and whether or not more people are congregating in front of an AI pastor than live flesh and blood pastors and why the flesh and blood pastors are getting upset about it. <laughs> it's the most bizarre thing, but it's a thing that's actually happened. I'd love to delve in more. Dread, I want to see the I want to see the pastors replaced by Daleks. Oh man! Uh, okay, <laughs> I, I just wanted to point out that uh, Data Strady or no Loma uh, put in here uh, that uh, always at the end of the movie, of course everyone's walked out. Is uh, the story all names, characters, and incidents portrayed in this production are fictitious? Mm -hmm. The disclaimer, of course, is always at the end after sure. you've all left. And yeah. Yeah. unless so, it's a yeah. Marvel movie, then you're sending through it. Yeah. <laughs> Enjoying the soundtrack, Larry. There you go. What is atheism? I have no idea. I think we're done with the show since nobody knows what atheism is and no one's <laughs> talking about it. So, yeah, souls exist. Uh, atheism doesn't mean anything. End of the show, right, Larry? <laughs> Right. Uh, sure. <laughs> Souls don't exist. At least that's what I understand. My book, <laughs> uh, since you asked, is called Atheism, What's It All About? And it's available on Amazon. Thanks, everybody, for joining us on the Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. Remember, you can find this show on Apple iTunes, Pocket Cast, Amazon, and Podcasts Everywhere. Just search for Digital Free Thought Radio Hour. You can find... Uh, my content at uh, digitalfreethought.com. Be sure to click on the blog button for our radio show archives, atheist songs, and many articles on the subject. Um, if you have any questions for you, the show, you can send them to us at askanatheist at knoxvilleatheist.org. By the way, if you're a member of a clergy, a preacher, an imam, pastor, or priest who no longer believes in the claims of religion, there's help for you at The Clergy Project. It's uh, clergyproject.com org online go for it if you're watching this on youtube be sure to like and subscribe remember everybody is going to somebody else's hell the time to worry about it is when they prove that heavens and hells and souls are real until then don't sweat it enjoy your life and we'll see you next week say bye everybody bye bye, -bye. bye, -bye. <laughs>